Hey, what's up YouTube? So today we are going to be installing an iWave C commercial air cleaning device right there. This unit is up to 12 tons. The other iWave, I can't remember exactly what uh, model it is, but it's for six and under. This one's six to 12 tons. And I'm putting it on this eight and a half ton train unit right here. Now, if you're not really familiar with these iWave C devices, the technology isn't new, it's just been rebranded over the years. I'm not going to get into the sciences of it, why we need it, why people want it, um, if it actually does work, what it does to, you know, the, the virus. I don't want to say it, but the virus, anyway. I'm not going to get into all that. Um, I had a lengthy discussion about this on one of our HVAC overtime episodes, and I'll link that in the uh, description or at the end of this video. So, with that being said, we open the box, we get some mounting stuff. Now, we're gonna be mounting this unit right here on the side, right about in here. The directions say you can mount it in the ductwork. Uh, the preferred mounting location is after a pre-filter and before the cooling coil. An alternate mounting location is the supply air duct or the return air duct. Basically, you can install it anywhere in the in the uh, Airstream now this particular customer wants them installed right here on these train units our Evaporator coils right here. It runs diagonally like this right down to our drain right there And they want it installed right here Obviously for installing one of these Do not put them on a panel because that panel will ha eventually have to be removed for some sort of service. So that would be really stupid. All right, so here is the actual device itself. Pretty simple. Comes with, uh, I don't know, about five, six foot of, of cord here. All wrapped together in a nice little bundle. Makes it, uh, makes for a pretty easy install. They're not terribly, difficult to install. You're going to need a four inch hole saw and uh, roughly a three quarter inch hole saw right there. So first things first, let's go over here and lock out our disconnect. I like to just take my keys, put my keys in there because I'm not going to forget those because I can't leave without them obviously. So. So power's off. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna take my panels off right here. I'm gonna take all three of these panels off and kind of get an idea of how I wanna wire this. These can be wired for 208, 120, or 24 volt. Um, I find it's usually easier and faster to just wire it directly to the transformer. They do need to have power uh, consistently they always have to have power on them and if you are installing one of these the other thing you have to do is you have to you have to set up your thermostat so the blower runs non-stop so that being said let's pull some panels off real quick here right over there way back in the corner that's where it's going to be mounted First thing I like to do is kind of mount it. Get a rough idea where you want to where you want to put it. Keep in mind that you have to connect this. You have to have this wire going through this cabinet at some point. So, and also you want to watch out for these tabs because these tabs need to be screwed down. Perfect. Now, if 
if you don't draw a smiley face, it's not going to work very well. And everything will just go to hell after that. So, let's put a hole in it. Now, I don't know if you noticed when I was showing you the underside of this, but there's a, a gasket that goes on the underside of this to uh, keep the rain out, all the elements. So you don't really need to caulk anything around this. All right, now I'm gonna make a, a little hole right up down here. And then we're gonna stretch these wires out a little bit. Like so as you can tell I got my wires pulled through now you may have to be a little creative when you're threading these wires behind that blower I have a little hook that's on a long wooden stick that I use to pull filter filters on machines so that works perfectly just stick it in there pull this through just be careful not to snag any other wires so now what we need to do is we need to get this through here, over here, and into our transformer. So what I'm going to do on this is I'm going to find a spot right around the bottom here, take my three-quarter hole saw, make sure there's nothing on the other side, nothing I'm going to hit, we're good. put it back on I find with these train units you don't have to modify this wiring as much it's a pretty good fit if you're installing this on some other brands you may run into some other issues but I've installed them on Carrier, York um, even a couple Aeons and all you really need to do is run a little bit of extra wiring to them really not that big of a deal. Once you get that connected, jam the wires through the hole. There's your other little connection right there. figure out what to do with our wiring. These two purple wires, I'm going to clip these off. These are just for an alarm system. If you have a building automation system, then you can wire these in. So if there's ever any issue with this ionizer, if it shuts off for any reason, it'll just uh, set off an alarm. But we don't have that in this particular location, so we're not going to use it. So what I've done is I've ran 12 gauge wire to my wires that I poked through the cabinet here. Now I know I didn't need to use 12 gauge wire, I could use 18 gauge, whatever. I could also take this 12 gauge wire and hooked it directly to the incoming power side of our contactor. There's a multiple way, there's, there's multiple different ways you can power these. This is just how I want to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm take one of these double spade connectors.
All right, got our panels back on. Let's get our keys out of here. Power back up and see if we got a green light on this thing. We do have power. Now besides this green light, there's really no other way to verify that this thing even works. We just gotta take its word for it, I guess. I know you guys probably noticed this. I'm gonna put some caulk around here. No big deal. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of it. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to email me or put a comment below, all right? We'll see you guys on the next one.